Hello friends, this is Anayat, and I want to talk to you about a theory of time. There was a man named Hazrat Anayat Khan, and he said, what science discovers at the end, the mystics have known since the beginning. Now, I'll start by sharing with you the Western theory of time. I have a chart, and in the Western theory of time, what you start with is the Big Bang, and after the Big Bang you have very elemental tendencies expressed as different particles, which eventually group into electrons, and the electrons group into clouds, and from the clouds you have galaxies, stars, everything that we see when we look in the sky today. All scientific theories are based on observations of the physical world. And we know that behind the physical world is the divine reality. The physical world, all the things that we see around us, are shadows or reflections of very basic principles. <clears throat> now, science often, over time, changes what it believes. You make a shift from Newtonian mechanics to quantum physics, and what used to be a very concrete view of the world changes to a field of probabilities and a lot of things in vibrational motion. So, by taking this theory of time and expanding it a little bit further, here's another view that you're probably familiar with. And here's a chart. We start with basic life after the Earth is formed and after the Big Bang, and time is viewed as something that is still pushing forward from the Big Bang and pushes to basic animal life, plant life. You come up with dinosaurs, then you end up with human beings. Now, this is one way to view time, but there's another way to view time and the phenomena that we see manifesting. And that is through a concept called the Omega Point. And the Omega Point was a concept, a term, coined by Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. And his most famous book is called The Phenomena of Man. And what he says is that what's happening as we view time and as we view increasing complexity that things are not being pushed from behind, from the Big Bang, but things are being pulled towards the Omega Point. And how I want to expand on this theory is to say that the increasing complexity that we see in life forms as we move down this timeline is because the amount of complexity that appears at any given point is in direct relationship to the temporal distance of that thing between that thing and the omega point itself. So just think about the distance that a protozoa is away from the omega point is quite far away. Think about getting closer to animals, plants, dinosaurs. You're much closer to the omega point. So think of the omega point as like a star that's emitting radiation. And there's a formula about radiation. It's called the, uh, the inverse square. So basically, when you take the distance between an energy emitter and you cut it in half, the amount of energy that is hitting that point is squared becomes, instead of a factor of, say, 2, it becomes a factor of 4, and then 16, etc. So, what's happening is that there's some motion, there's some movement towards the omega point, and that is manifesting as all kinds of shadows or reverberations back in what we experience as the physical universe. Now, if you think about something like the Internet, the reasons that the Internet exists are, one, our proximity now to the Omega Point. Remember, as we get closer to the Omega Point, one of the things that 
increases is complexity. The other thing that increases as you get closer to the omega point is interdependence. So one of the reasons the internet has manifested is because of our proximity to the omega point. Another reason that the internet has manifested is because the omega point itself is a unity. So science says the unity existed back there, back in time, and they call it the Big Bang. But the omega point theory says that unity exists in front of us and we are moving towards it. So as we get closer to the omega point, as we get closer to this unity, what happens is that there are shadows that are cast forward, just like if you were doing shadow puppets. You're at the omega point, you're doing a shadow puppet, and as you get closer to the source of the shadow, the fine lines, the details of that shadow also get finer. So the internet and things like YouTube are expressions of the unity. The internet is a reflection of this increasing unity and increasing connectedness. So as we move forward we will be living in a more connected world. And I would suspect that one of the areas that's going to manifest this unity is not just in our technology but also in our consciousness. If you think about the human body and you think about energy bands, you have the physical world, the mental world, the spiritual world. And you can think of consciousness going through our brains being a transceiver. You can think of consciousness as being another expression of unity. It makes no sense that the goal of creation would be a number of human beings who simply are connected or interact together socially or through commerce. It makes much more sense that the goal of creation is to have beings who possess consciousness that not only understand that they are expressions of the divine, but also enter into relationships with each other to experience a much larger unity. In the Bible, this concept is called the body of Christ. And this body of Christ is an expression that is made up of different cell units or different people in the body. So this concept of unity is not exclusive to Christianity. There are, in most spiritual traditions, talk of a new world or a new sun or a golden age. And what I'm saying is that this golden age is not just the changing of a yuga back to another golden period like we had in the past. Yes, we are changing the ages. But qualitatively, there's going to be something very fundamentally different about this age because the types of conscious connections that we have are going to be much clearer and much stronger than any previous cycle that we've been through. Peace to you.